the RE100 Type 89 Base Jabber. Those of you familiar with this would recognize it from Char's Counterattack, probably the greatest Gundam movie ever made. I mean, I watched Gundam NT recently. It was alright, but it's starting to feel like it's moving away from realistic robots into like the giant super mecha genre. I I'm just sorry, it feels like it. As much as I love Gundam, I gotta admit, uh, that one didn't sit well with me. Thank God we have Gundam Thunderbolt to keep things somewhat together. Anyway, despite my grievances with the movie, the Jabber is pretty straightforward. Honestly, this kit is just a 100 scale version of the 144 scale base Jabber. I mean, the construction is damn near identical. But the big difference is this one gives you the ability to attach two mobile suits to the top and bottom. Since I don't have two Jestas and I don't have two Jagans on hand, or even a Jagan and a Jesta, I just have to live with one. It's a cool gimmick. I mean, if you've got the extra kits and you want to do like some sort of diorama, then this would probably be fantastic. The downside is $64 feels like a lot for this, considering the construction is hyper simple and there's a whole ton of seams. Like if you're one of those people that likes to fill seams, this is going to be a nightmare because the part separation is not that great. To put this together and try and get rid of all the seams and paint it would be too much of a headache. That's what I thought of doing. Then I realized how much of it needed to be clicked together. And it was just like, forget it. I'll live with the multitude of horrendous and hideous seams. Also, you can prep it up with three standard Gundam display stands. Action base one, uh, preferably black or clear. Probably clear would be a good idea. But the downside is those things are around eight to ten dollars a piece. And you need three to connect this to stands in order to use two mobile suits at once so in the long and the short of it this would be a hundred dollars if you wanted to use it in that sort of way which makes me sit there and think that's a pretty big pill to swallow i mean if you've got the money it's fine but i think for the average builder that's a bit much considering i've seen most people who build gumpla taking the runners and melting them together to build stands i don't think anyone's going to go out of their way to spend 30 or 40 dollars on stands just to use this base driver to have two mobile suits connected to it for what you get it's a nice little display piece it's cool for putting one mobile suit on top of it's great for dioramas as you can see here even though this well, i guess it's a diorama i mean it's just my set for filming gunpla but i guess it doubles as a diorama you can kind of tell a story with it and that's what i was kind of going for here but in all honesty i still feel that this is a bit much for what you're getting on top of that with the re grades i don't really like re what is it re something reborn i can't even remember reborn grade i call them real easy grade cheap band i can poop them out there isn't much construction i honestly don't know what to say about this i mean once i finished it it was a very nice looking kit the other downside is there's absolutely no decals with this none all you get are these foil stickers. I didn't even bother using them. There's no sort of caution warnings. There's no sort of labels for doorways or anything, even though you can't really find them on this kit. Still, it, it kind of sucks. But if you happen to have enough Gumpla lying around like I do, then you have enough stickers to add a little extra flair. I only threw a handful on. And even then, I was just kind of like, screw it. Let me just move on from this project. Despite my grievances with it being overly simple and kind of expensive for what it is. I think this would be better if this is like $30. 25 to $30 is what this should cost for what you're getting. There's also fuel tanks. I didn't really touch on those. They're cool, I guess, but you know, not much to say about them. On the plus side though, the fuel tanks are suspended high enough on the kit so that they don't drag on the floor or your display. So there's a boon there, I guess, but overall, I'm kind of indifferent towards it. I guess I could tell you about what I did with painting. I sort of did a mixture of the 0093 paint with the 0096 paint because uh, I felt black was a little bit better than that sort of strange bluish black that they were going for. Oh my shit. Oh my God. I just realized something. 
I painted the thrusters the wrong color. That's another thing that sucks about this kit. Like the instruction manual is rudimentary. It's like four pages. It's like the sort of, it's the sort of instruction manual you get from like a Chinese knockoff. They're all black and white and it has a color guide that's in black and white. But thank God at least they have English translations. I hate pulling Google out of my phone. But since there's no sort of picture representation of what it should look like in some areas, you're inclined to make mistakes, which I realize I made a ton. I guess I should have stopped and looked on websites for what the base jabber is supposed to look like. Once again, the lack of part separation in colors. Like, I had no clue what most of the colors are supposed to be. Which was a huge, huge mistake now looking at, like, the promotional art. Because the promotional art is on websites. It's not on the box. So, if you don't think to look at other people's painted kits or look at the promotional art for this kit, you wouldn't know what parts need to be separated with colors. As I said before, a lot of the runners, a lot of the stuff is just blue. So I sat there and thought, oh, well, I guess it's supposed to be blue. That's on me for not watching Shara's counterattack again just for the base jabber. Because I didn't paint the thrusters correctly. And where the mobile suits hold on to the little hand pieces, I don't know what the hell those things are called. Those are also supposed to be painted blue at the bottom. I did not even pick up on that. That is a huge mistake. So that sucks. That really blows. That lack of part separations threw me off. Because the box is just this dark blue. So when you look at the box, you're like, uh, <laughs> is everything this weird shade of blue? It would have been really nice if they added some sort of color, you know? It just really blows. If, like, the manual just had some form of color, I would have said to myself, okay, so this is where this is supposed to be separated. But since it's an RE100, there's a lot of masking and painting you have to do yourself. And if you're not 100% hell bent on an idea of what you want this kit to look like, you're liable to make huge mistakes like that. Well, unfortunately, I don't have the time to just take it apart and repaint certain areas for my own vanity, though it's tempting to do so. But it's a shame that I missed that. So there we go. Something real. A real reaction. But other than that, uh, I gave it the sort of 0093 paint scheme for the blues because I thought it was a nice hue and I wanted to test some ideas that I was having for uh, the Master Grade Goof Custom from 8th MS team since I plan on painting one of those soon and I wanted to come up with an idea of how I was going to do the blues into the purples. Also the panel lining on this kit I know this has nothing to do with the kit itself for the review but it's a tip from me. I did an oil wash of purple I mixed it myself but you know nonetheless purple and I found that purple works so much better than the standard Tamiya black though Tamiya black is much easier to work with and the oil washes you have to keep mixing it over and over again because the oil and the mineral spirits always separate from each other which makes panel lining a real pain in the ass for more than 10 seconds i'm going to say this a purple wash on this blue hue actually has a more realistic depth i feel in the color transition in those areas so i would suggest that you do something like that rather than just black or brown which is just so sort of done to death just for me it'll be very very subtle but when people pick up on it They'll probably appreciate it. And if not, at least you'll know. And I guess that should do it for me because this isn't much for review. It's more like me complaining. I mean, I like the kit, but for the price, it's too high for the average person. Luckily for me, with being on YouTube and uh, having a following and being able to get discounts on stuff, I can sort of shrug off the cost of this. But for someone else who's like, you know, not rolling in dough, not say that I am, but you know, you can't write it off as, oh, I'm doing this for YouTube, so it's justifiable. <laughs> Rather than getting lunch, I'd say that this kit is overpriced. The part separations suck ass. There's a whole lot of seams you got to get rid of if you're one of those people. And then once you get rid of the seams, it's already connected, which means you'd have to do a whole bunch of like masking while the kit is almost completely put together, which would then be an even bigger pain in the ass because I've been down that road especially with resin kits. So, yeah, it's my verdict. It's all right if you just want to use it for display. If you're painting and you want to get rid of seams, it's a pain in the ass, but price sucks. And if you don't paint, this parts separation of colors suck. It's the best way I could tell it to you. Oh, fuck. I totally forgot to talk about the other, the last gimmick on this thing. Forgive me. What are the final gimmicks which you probably won't care too much about and I don't feel is executed that well? It's the little connector that you could put into the base jabber's top and bottom to connect a Jesta or a Jagan. I don't like it much. 
At least with the Jesta. Maybe it works better than the Jagan. I couldn't quite get the angle correct. Because if I put the Jesta too far forward, then you can't connect the action base to the Jesta. If I put the Jesta too far back, his knees won't go all the way down with his legs locked into an action pose stance. Because the Jesta has adjustable knee areas. And it's real hard to just get that good medium that it can actually fit. So this is the best I could do personally. It's all right. It's a decent connection. So if you set up your stands to have it pointed upward in the air or something, the Jesta wouldn't fall off of the kit, which is a good thing. I don't think those back foot locks do anything in all honesty, other than go into the foot to look like it's a better connection for the Jesta. I mean, I don't think there's any real functionality there. If it were to slip off, those things wouldn't stop anything. So I'm not quite sure what's the point. So yeah, <laughs> you know, and that should pretty much do it. I've covered every gimmick because that's the only gimmicks it has. One connector for an action base on the top and bottom for the mobile suits themselves. And then there's the three connections for action bases at the bottom. Granted, I do have three action bases on hand that I could have used, but they're connected to my Sasabi Verka and my narrative Shinanju Stein, which would be a whole pain in the ass to take apart and then take them off the connections, bring it back, do all this and that. And since I put a lot of metal detail parts on Sasabi, he's heavier than he should be. And it's just like, I didn't want to go through the hassle. And I do apologize to anybody who would have liked to have seen that. I guess I should have planned ahead and bought a couple. But at the time I bought my action stands, I never thought I'd be doing a YouTube channel for Gunpla stuff. So, you know, life comes at you fast, right? You're in good hands of Allstate. At this point, I might as well do a plug for New Type HQ. If you're looking for one of these, that might be the place to go. Though currently, they seem to be sold out. But from what I understand, there should be some shipment of Gunpla stuff coming this June. Including this June will be the Alex version 2.0. So maybe pre-order if you can and kill a couple birds with one stone by using the promo code It's a Gunpla and save yourself 10%. And that's going to do it for me. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. So that way, YouTube may one day put me on the trending page. I don't think I... No, actually, I cursed a couple times. I just edited it out. Let's just pretend I never cursed. I'm the new Bob Ross. There's no mistakes. Only happy little shit snacks. I can't remember who said that in the comic section, but bless you, sir, for your creativity.